to record this on the cloud. Okay, so we're recording. Hi, Kenny. How are you? I love that your name is Kendrick, though. Yeah. Uh, Kendrick. Don't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Kendrick definitely has a, a professional feel, but Kenny, Kenny J is also cool too as well. And you are an insurance professional. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yep, I definitely can. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Kenny. I have my channel, Kenny J TV. I'm an insurance professional in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, and Tennessee. I'm an agency owner. I have my agency actually license in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Uh, what got me into insurance was actually during the pandemic. I was laid off of my job. I actually hated my current job and I wasn't really feeling fulfilled. And I was researching different careers that were lucrative, but I could also make a difference. And insurance definitely was the one that I fell in love with. So I started doing research, started going on YouTube. Um, and you're one of the channels that I saw and I saw how passionate you were and other people were and I was like, definitely want to get into <laughs> definitely want to get into that. So after I passed my exam, I started working for actually State Farm for a little bit. And I noticed on YouTube when I was trying to get my license, there was nobody that was young. Then there was nobody that looked like me that was talking about how to get your license and like just basically how it is to be an insurance agent. I wasn't getting any raw, uncut answers. So I wanted to be the change that I wanted to see. So after I made my channel and started posting my videos, a lot of people were reaching out to me just yesterday. This 19 year old gentleman reached out to me and was like, hey, I just dropped out of school. This is all I have. And I'm really grateful that you are uh, doing this because there was nobody else on YouTube that, that looked like me that was doing it. So I really feel like I'm making a difference and an impact and it really means the world to me. Even if I just changed one person's life, the fact that I am just, making a difference just really means the world to me. It's not about the views, it's more about the impact and I'm willing to help any and everybody that is, you know, willing to just take the advice. That is amazing. So first question for you is, what was the job that you were not loving? So I was at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Okay. Um, everybody knows about Enterprise. I was a sales manager out there. I was working 12 hour days, getting there at about 5 a.m. washing cars in the wow. middle of the uh, it was really a horrible job. It was a great experience at first. Um, and I was actually selling products as well. So we were selling like our damage waivers. So basically, if something happened to the car, I, it wouldn't hit your insurance. So in a, in a sense, it was kind of like selling insurance because it wasn't a tangible item. So, But I, I knew I was really good at sales. I was always like the top 10 out of 100. Okay. But I said, let me okay. actually go somewhere where I can profit off of this. Because I wasn't getting paid any commission, just hourly. Um, oh, okay. And I wasn't really feeling fulfilled there. So I was like, let me actually go to a career because I was always kind of like envious of people that had a career like an adjuster or like a doctor. Like you could go anywhere and have that position opposed to me. I was just a sales manager. But I didn't really have a specific like niche career. So I feel better now. Like I'm an insurance agent. I could literally go anywhere in the country and be just that. Yes, and uh, as you mentioned, you live in and operate out of uh, North Carolina, um, and you also operate in South Carolina, but you have an agency now that you also uh, oper can uh, do uh, sell insurance in um, Georgia too. Who is the uh, insurer that you uh, write policies for? Like the, the, you mean the people that I, I service? Yes. So first, my agency's name is Remedy Insurance and Wealth Builders, LLC. I do all lines of insurance. The, the most that I see right now is definitely life insurance as well as commercial. I'm a writer of a lot of businesses and a lot of times State Farm will send me business if they are unable to insure them. So just yesterday, I insured a young lady. She had a candle business. And of course, you can imagine that is a higher risk because everything is just flammable. So uh, <laughs> is that right? It's meltable. I don't know about it's flammable. Right. It's, you know, you're right. It's true. Um, but I, I'm able to ensure the people that most people are not. Um, and I, I just really love to build that rapport and, and with the clients and being able to ensure them as well as their personal uh, products. So basically their home, their auto, you know, their umbrella policy. So I do all the nine yards with insurance. Okay, so that so 
are you like more of a broker then? Yes. So I do okay. have a few agents under me. I have one in Georgia. I have one in South Carolina, and then I have two agents in North Carolina as well. Um, they were all independent beforehand, but they didn't appreciate how they weren't getting, they were not getting any training from their uh, upline producer, which is the person that is over them. So I wanted to bring kind of that captive feel to the independent side by giving them the training that I've learned along the way. So uh, it's been a great experience so far. They're learning a lot. They're doing great. So I just want to pour into people's life. Like I said before, it's not so much about the sales and like pushing that is more so the um just the training and pouring into you know my team and i feel like if you are passionate about it then the money will definitely come okay so let's let me let's try to help me us understand this because what you're saying that it sounds like you acquired the other agents is that is that how you you expanded into other states or where did you guys start as a team like t tell us a little bit about that like somebody wants to get into insurance and i always hear from people who want to get their life and health license and they want to get their pnc license and they want to get their adjuster license and what i try to really try to circle people or rein people in is like that's three different yeah. things it's three, you know, you're going to learn property and casualty to be able to sell home and auto policies or commercial business. And then your life and health is right. that life insurance, health insurance, and then adjusting is a whole different thing compared to any of those. Because I have adjusters who never read policies. I have agents who never read policies and they don't crisscross. So tell us a little bit, uh, you know, about how your journey has been from okay you left state farm to now you are oper you're the multi-state agent operator so with state farm i was licensed in four states and i knew when i opened my own agency i wanted to be licensed in multiple states just so i could have a bigger target market actually three out of five of my agents actually were subscribers on my youtube reached out to me and was just like, hey, like, are we able to come on board? So I was able to bring them on. A few other of my subscribers that are in Florida have reached out, but I'm not in Florida yet. So unfortunately, I couldn't bring them on. And then the other two that were in North Carolina, I actually knew personally. They saw how successful the insurance career and how uh, lucrative the insurance industry is. So they hopped in as well and I've been training them. So the North Carolina ones I knew personally, but the ones in other states, I knew um, or do youtube and i am updating my people because i am missing a few people up there so that's okay that's okay my head not my heart <laughs> yeah that's okay you're funny you're funny um but okay so tell us about the the lucrative lucrative side i guess uh, of the business um life insurance i know is is for me i don't see how it's i understand how life insurance you know it makes money but not the agent like i don't know how the agent makes money i know that people pay their premiums and how people use it to um to uh, in, increase their own income right because people generally can can borrow i think on some of yep. their life insurance policies so tell us what's the what's the money like for uh people who don't know anything about life insurance or just selling insurance yeah, so life insurance is definitely the most lucrative. It's the highest paying commission wise. Um, certain agents, uh, companies will pay you 100% commission of the first year premium. Some will pay you, I've seen the highest as 150% the first year of the premium and then you get the residuals. So every year you get a percentage. It can be like 10% the second through fifth year, five to nine, it's like 5%. And then from year 11 until the, um, you know the client passes away it's like two percent so you're always getting those residuals opposed to pnc it's like maybe ten percent so it's not as much and of course the premiums for life insurance usually are a lot higher so that's really why it's most lucrative and that's really what i focus on in my agency is that and then commercial as well because you know a lot of people do get up and, and switch their car insurance like talking but when you have a business you don't want to get up and change your insurance as quickly and if you're satisfied most likely you're going to stay and you're not going to leave the agency just for two or three dollars. So those are the two areas that I focus on with my agency. 
Wow. So, and let's, okay. So how long have, cause you said you were an enterprise and then you looked and saw lucrative careers mm -hmm. and then you saw life insurance or selling insurance was a good way to go. Right. How did you then transition and now you're like a very successful um, agent? Like, I mean, for, I can sell somewhat. I'm not like a, 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 a real heavy with the closing. And then life insurance, which I would like to get, um, I don't have yet. So definitely would love yeah. to talk to you about that. But um, how did how did you, I mean, talking about life insurance, I, I mean, I guess it's always kind of like a little bit like, you know, talking about, you know, somebody dying. Yeah. You know, so how did you transition from selling cars or, you know, selling um, or working with enterprise, I should say, to like, okay, you know what, now I'm going to learn everything about insurance and now I like it and I'm, I'm thriving in it. Yeah. Um, so basically I did a lot of research. So I feel like research is key. You got to know the statistics. You can look at GoFundMe and any, any day that you type in funeral is nearly a million searches. So a million people are always like consistently die and do not mm. have life insurance. And mm. the one thing that I tell people, cause I don't believe in buying leads. I've never had to buy leads before is work your warm market. And then when you work your warm market, they know why you call, that you're calling, they know your intent. And nine times out of 10, I close the deal. And then I believe that every client that you work with has five to seven good referrals out of them. So I get those, those referrals and it always builds my pipeline up. And a lot of people don't know that life insurance can also be used as an investment. Uh, the, the founder of Walt Disney actually started Disney World from his life insurance policy. And if you research it, a lot of different uh, CEOs of these Fortune 500 companies started their insurance. I mean, their uh, companies off of their insurance policy. So mm -hmm. it's more than just when you die, you get the money. It can also be a living benefit as well. But I feel like a lot of agents don't really explain that to their clients. So their clients don't see the value. When you build the value of the life insurance, the price gets lower and lower in their mind. So that's where I kind of deliver to my clients and just show them the importance and value of the life insurance. Wow, that's a incredible. I, I had no idea about Disney. Um, I knew uh, uh, Ray Kroc, though, and Disney had, uh, they kind of knew each other. I guess they kind of yeah. went up through the army or uh, of such together. Uh, in Disney, he was like, you know, instead of chasing girls, he would just be drawing his little cartoons, which is just right. so, that's that mind, you know, just, right. I don't care about nothing else, but just this one thing. Um, so tell us a little bit about becoming an agent. We talked about, you, we just kind of went over, okay, work your warm market, um, which we, I want to maybe circle back around to, but becoming the actual agent. So you did some research. What are the steps for somebody to, to get to where you are? Yeah, so I definitely took a pre-licensure exam uh, course. So I went to Kaplan, actually. It was an amazing a program, it was self-taught, so I had to be disciplined. If you're not disciplined, it's not the course for you. So every day I would set aside three or four hours, study, and I was um, also apply for my license at the same time. A lot of times people mess up when they wait to apply for their license after they pass the exam because it takes a few days. So I took my pre-licensure course. After I completed my hours, you have to do a test in that course. Once you pass it, you get the certificate. And then you go to pearsonview.com and then you schedule a test in a testing center near you. Of course, during COVID, it was very tricky to find somewhere, but they had limited options. And then I took my test at one of the testing centers and then I had to get fingerprints as well. And then typically it takes a week after you take the exam, they do email you your license. Um, I didn't pass any of my exams except for one the first time and I had to take four. So I'm very transparent about that on my channel. Like it's it's not easy, less than 50% of agents pass their exam mm. the first time. Um, one exam took me three times. I got very discouraged, but I know that if I feel that way, a lot of people out there feel that way as well. So I definitely try to vocalize that and say, it's not the end all be all if you don't pass as well. Because if you pass the fourth time and, and Joe Blow passes the first time, but you guys both have a license, there is literally no difference. It's literally what you do with your license and your career after that will make the difference. Wow, that's interesting. So both of us weren't uh, successful 100% the first right. time out. 
Uh, luckily for adjusters, we just have that one exam. Although if you wanted to, like in Georgia, I'd recommend because you can use the same course, you know, I recommend people take like the IA test and the public adjuster test within the same week. Um, because you're already studied the information. There's only a, a few questions that are different, but you're saying for your examinations, there were five tests? Four, it was four, four. exams. It, one was for property, one was for casualty, one was for life, and one was for health. Oh, so, wow, yeah, wow, so wow, wow. Position, and then take the exam and take it again. How and many then, hours I, of studying for each of those? It was 40, well, 40 for life, property and casualty and then 40 for life and health. I wow, Ooh, wow. I don't remember it's been a while ago, but I think it was 40. Um, and I it was, was going to say 20, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, it was a lot of reading, but it definitely was not boring, which helped me out a lot. And okay. Kaplan also has this cool feature where you can take practice exams, which really helped me a lot because when I'm able to apply the information and wrap my mind around how the testing goes, it helps. Because if I'm just reading the information, and go in there and take the test, I'm, I'm doomed because I don't know what to expect. Absolutely. And that, that's one thing I definitely emphasize every time somebody is like, well, you know, what should I concentrate on? The practice questions. Uh, yeah. the, co the, the chapters are good, you know, because if you're not doing well, you can go back and look at a certain chapter. However, once you're getting ready to go and take that exam, I always just recommend people to just focus on practice questions, practice questions. Um, so, the, so, okay, so after you do that, you have to get the PNC license and then you get your life and health license. Then you apply to different companies and you started working with State Farm. What was it, and I know you have a video and I'll pop that up here um, about leaving State Farm and you have a State Farm rap video. I'm just seeing that. That's pretty cool. Um, what, what, what was the decision behind leaving State Farm? So my goal was never actually to stay with State Farm. I wanted to go somewhere and learn the ropes. Uh, State Farm was a great company. They're also the biggest and number one insurer in the country. So I definitely wanted to go there, learn the ropes. I, didn't ne I never wanted to open an agency and not know what I was doing. So I said, let me go to State Farm. I know they're reputable. They're, they're a great company. Let me go there and learn and then I can go and open my own agency. So I was there for about maybe five months, five, six months. And I saw how the pay structure was at State Farm and it wasn't lucrative because I have experience mm -hmm. on the independent side. I know agents on the independent side and the way that State Farm was paying, a lot of people don't know that they're one of the lowest paying, um, they're one of the lowest paying companies out there. They're, they're just paying Jake pretty much. So I saw that and I knew that I, it was more out there for me. And even my coworkers had no idea what residuals were. It's like the, the agent owner was kind of shielding them from the knowledge of independence and fear of them leaving for more money. So it was never my goal to stay, but I got valuable experience for State Farm that I will always be grateful for. I'm really glad that I, I did. I still keep in touch with them now. And they constantly do send me referrals because a lot of times State Farm cannot insure you because they only insure the cream of the crop. They only insure the best of the best because it's not a high risk. For property and casualty or for everything. the life of everything? Oh, everything. okay. Yeah, and okay. then they don't do health insurance as well. They do like the disability income policies and or like the hospital income policies, but they don't do any like health insurance. So during open enrollment, we opted out because State Farm can't do it, but I work hard for those licenses and I wanted to be able to exercise those licenses, which is another reason why I left State Farm. Okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. And then um, opening up your own agency, um, how long before it, you, maybe, I don't know if it has, you know, met or matched your income that you were doing before. So somebody is like, okay, I want to do PNC, I want to do uh, life and health, I want to do adjusting. Uh, how long you know, can somebody even start part time selling and then like transition over or is it do you recommend them hop into an agency because that's who you, you worked under uh, another agent to start off with, I believe. How mm -hmm. long before, you, you know, somebody could maybe come in and, and change their actual career. 
So I would say for insurance, it's a little tricky because when you're a state farm, you're what they call captive. So you cannot write with anybody else by contract. So I was in the background starting my agency, but my, my parents were also doing a lot of the legwork because I legally could not. So they were signing the contracts on my behalf and all of that. So then when I had, to, when it was actually time to start working, I had to just leave state farm. I couldn't do it part time. And I, I know that if I'm putting all my energy and time into building a perfect book of business, there's no way I could do my own. So I took a leap of faith. I have made more money than I have at state farm because the commission is just so much higher. And I feel like when you have something that's your own, you go harder. You you have that that push to keep going because it's yours and you know you're going to get a return on investment. So I literally work 12, 15 hours, but it's not because I have to, it's because I love it and I want to see my baby grow and grow and grow. So I'm very passionate about it. And so you have to go full time at first. You can't kind of waver unless you're doing another job and another career. But even then, I feel like if you have a plan A and then you have a plan B, you're already planning to fail with your plan A. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just, kinda, I literally put all my eggs in one basket and tell you not to do it, but it's worked out for me so far. And like I said, I've worked at Warm Market and it's really been very helpful for me. And another thing I feel like that has helped me is my uh, marketing on Facebook, my marketing on YouTube, my marketing on all my social media sites. I feel like that's what sets me, you know, apart from all the older agents that aren't really tech savvy. Okay, so speaking of marketing, Let's say we I have some people watching this video right now, of course. Well, not as we record, but um, what, what's your marketing uh, strategy? Like if, if somebody like me want, needed life and health or auto, because uh, I, I may be switching from all state. Uh, uh, how do you how do you pull me in What's some tactics that you use? So, so in marketing in general, I just I post a lot of consistent content. At the end of the day, I feel like you know that I'm an insurance agent. Let's say right now you don't need insurance or later you don't need insurance, but randomly I'll get a message or a phone call because if you think I need insurance, can't need an insurance agent. He's, he's knowledgeable. So I, it's in the back of your head. And then when I am talking to my clients or my prospects, I, I, I'm very knowledgeable because I research all the time and I want to be knowledgeable. I don't ever want you to feel like, I'm just like, um, I don't know, let me find out. Like, I, I want you to trust me because I am your insurance agent, your consulting, your financial advisor, all in one. So I feel like the research is definitely key because if you go to buy a house or if, you, if you're over there and you're adjusting and, and you don't know, it's just like, well, what are you doing here? I want a, a professional that really knows what they're talking about. So sure, sure. I, you know, I'm very passionate about. Okay, okay, that's that's actually um, amazing that you are able to number one uh, uh, do be doing better now than you were uh, working for somebody else. And I can see going into insurance. It's always you, even as adjusters, you create somewhat of your own business. Uh, yeah. There's the startup cost. You got to get your license, and then there's the training, of course. And for you, it was. Um, going to an agent and probably at, since you went full time, you had a different pay structure than what you were, you know, getting at enterprise. Um, and I know like some roofers, when they first get started, they're like, man, I, you know, I was scared of the, just having the commission, but they went from making 30,000 in 2019 to making uh, 30,000 in three months in yeah. 2020. Um, and beyond. Um, and I know some adjusters do that, but there's not the consistency with adjusting as what you're saying with these uh, reoccurring commissions. And I think what beautiful about that is the life when you say, oh, you get this, you know, this reoccurring 2% until that person dies. So for 80 plus years, or let's even say 40 years, yeah. you're getting this little 2% change um and you may not even ever talk to that customer and some people are at some income levels they forget they even have the policy um you know what right. i mean so um that part is really cool what advice would you give to somebody who is on the fence or somebody who is new uh to trying to find a lucrative career you have to be a go-getter you have to be hungry you have to be willing to just take the chance 
the insurance and financial services industry has the most millionaires out of any industry in the world. So I feel that if you really want to be here, you have to be a go-getter. You have to be hungry. You have to be willing to talk to people. If you're not a people person, the sales part of insurance is not for you, but that doesn't mean there's not a position for you in insurance. It's so broad. You could do, you can be an adjuster. You could be an underwriter. You could be anything. So it's just like find your niche within insurance. Insurance, the sales part at least is not very strenuous. It can get stressful, but it's not strenuous. You know, at Enterprise, I was washing cars, I was selling products, I was getting cussed out by customers every day. But insurance, I can literally be in my bed, write a policy, I can market, and especially during COVID, it's everything is virtual now. And it's it's honestly a luxury career, in my opinion. Um, you can get a career for yourself, you can build your own book of business. So if you're on the fence about insurance, take the leap of faith. The worst that can happen is you can make some money and not enjoy it. And then you can fund your dream or your your career from insurance. Mm. I like that you mentioned how niche uh, it really is. Um, Even even with you selling the the multiple types of insurance that you do, uh, I I, I know some folks only sell certain types of uh, insurance, again, uh, health insurance or life insurance, uh, or, you know, they, they specialize in auto. Um, where they specialize in home. And I, I try to tell people that is the same with adjusting. You can mm-hmm. really niche yourself out after you get the foundations down. Uh, I know I was talking to an advisor myself and she's like, well, what, you know, what do you like to do? I'm, I'm a fan of marketing, um, advertising being one of my favorite interests. And they have adjusters when there comes time when somebody a professional says something or advertises falsely that they then need to go in and and get indemnified for because they had to pay that out and when the insurance companies don't agree uh, typically people go out and get lawyers but their adjusters are working on the the side of the insurance company Right. Um, they have fraud cases, you know, that uh, adjusters uh, can work in too. And so that's a really good point that maybe life and health isn't for you. Um, but there's the other aspects of home and auto, which people have to have, which is a, that's law. one of the best. Yeah, the law mandates you have to have some type of insurance somewhere. Uh, I always say real estate, although, you know, real estate is like king. It's like the lion. Um, I say insurance is like the sun. I mean, it just, it just touches everything. So, um, so even if you can't afford a home, you could, or real estate, you can still, you still have to, you just have to have, like, there's nothing you can do about the sun. And there's too many lobbyists in DC who will protect insurance. Uh, So you can never, it's never going anywhere. And it's uh, been there for a while. So that's, uh, so that's a real great point. Um, So if people wanted to reach you, Kenny, um, what would they do? So they can reach out to me. Uh, my email is kennyj at remediiwb.com. As well as on my website, you have a contact us form and that directly comes to our our contact email and I check it regularly. If I don't check it, I'll have one of my team members check it as well. Um, usually in all my videos, I have all my contact information. So I have my my what's it called? I'm going to go and blank. My Instagram on there, my insurance Instagram. I have my email, uh, my phone number up there for my business as well. And I'm always on that phone. So any way, any one of those ways is definitely a, a good way to reach me. I'm very quick to respond. I'm very prompt. Uh, I don't like to keep people waiting and you, know, people, you have questions while they're taking the exam. So definitely reach out to me any one of those ways. I'm always on social media, always marketing always willing to help people. This is amazing. This is really, uh, you look, yours just, it looks good. It looks so professional, it's organized, uh, it's consistent Thank you. Um, all the way down, which is really, 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 really cool um, to be able to see and have. Um, again, ladies and gents watching, we're talking to Kendrick Jones or Kenny J. Uh, TV as he is known on uh, YouTube. Don't forget to go out and follow him. Uh, The whole purpose of this entire conversation is in order to give everyone 
who uh, is looking at a second career. Uh, you tried the, the nine to five, uh, yeah. you, you tried maybe even internet businesses like I did. I was a, a job hopper before I hit insurance. I worked uh, in the event industry. I tried to do my own internet marketing agency, but um, I, I realized the, the competition when if I'm, if I'm able to compete with 16 year olds, mm -hmm. it just wasn't the right, uh, right place to be. Um, right. This one does take some skills. Um, it, it does take uh, being able to talk to people, but the best of all, you are helping people. There's no part of insurance that doesn't uh, really help people except for when they don't pay out. Um, and so Kenny is the owner of uh, Remedy Wealth Builders. Remedy Insurance and Wealth Builders. Remedy Insurance and Wealth Builders, which is uh, fantastic. So when you guys, when a company has wealth in the name, think about that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so go out and follow Kenny. Um, is there anything else that you, you want to leave us with? I leave you guys with one thing is just chase your dream. Don't live in fear because fear is the enemy of accomplishment. I was out here unhappy at a job for two years. And if I would have known now what I've known then, I would have left a long time ago and got into insurance. And when you are in your dream career, your dream job, you feel like you never are working. I feel like I haven't worked since I left two uh, a year ago at State Farm. So definitely just chase your dream. Be happy because life is too short to be miserable. So. Oh, by the way, do you have to have uh, uh, like a college degree for to sell insurance or like even to work at State Farm, do they prefer people who have uh, a degree or can somebody without a degree um, still come in and be successful? Yeah, as long as you're 18 years old and have your license. That's the great thing about insurance as well is you don't need that college degree. You don't have to go into that debt in order to be successful. You can literally make six figures your first year at 18 years old if you have those licenses. And as long as you're coachable and you're willing to learn, they'll accept you. Okay, and a couple more technical questions. Uh, now, since when you got your license in North Carolina, how does somebody go about being able to sell in other states? Is it just uh, completing a, a form or application to get that permission, or do they also have to retake a test? Yeah, it's usually just money you pay in a form that you fill out for most states. Some states are a little weird, and they're called non-reciprocal states, so you okay. do have to take exams in certain states i'm not sure of those states but most days you can just pay money some are a little expensive some are not i believe in tennessee it's only like 15 dollars uh, but in georgia it was like 200 and something dollars okay. for the license but it's it's a small you know payment that you make for a huge return on your investment so it's, okay. it's pretty easy once you pass the exam you never have to take it again as long as you keep up with your continuing education okay and so you also have ce credits do you know how many you have to get um I believe uh, 20. 20? I believe. Okay. I, I haven't done it yet. I don't know. Okay, I know, right? Uh, I believe for adjusters, guys, it's uh, 24 within a two-year period. Um, so, and you can you can find uh, different continuing education credits at uh, majoradjusters.com um, and uh, other sites like Kaplan also, I believe, has uh, some continuing education credits. Um, so you just got to be 18. Um, to be able to, and you just have to study. Uh, there is the, the course material that you have to take and pass. And after you pass in your home state, um, you're good to go. Um, so Kenny, thank you so much. Uh My name is Kenny J and this is Kenny JTV.